Four points about a grinding stone that I'd like to talk about here. One is that the grinding stone itself has to be sharp, harder than the material that is grinding. That only makes sense, that it, uh, it, it's not going to grind away real quick. So it's got to be fairly hard and we, we want it to last a long while. When we put a lot of pressure on, the grinding wheel has to be structurally sound so that it, it can withstand that type of intense pressure that's put on it. The grinding wheel must be heat resistant. It must be able to withstand the temperatures that are going to be imposed on it when you're grinding. Otherwise it breaks down and uh, you end up losing a, a grinding stone if it wears away too quickly. So the last item that I wanted to mention about our condition of a stone is, is one they call friability. That doesn't mean you throw the stone into a, a frying pan and, and cook up a steak. It is a, a, a matter of the uh, ability of the stone to shed or throw away or discharge the aggregate that is on the space of the stone. It gets rid of that, exposing new sharp surfaces so that the grinder can continue to cut and grind your, your metal um, object down. So now I'd like to talk to you just briefly about the different types of grinding wheels that we have out there in industry. This particular grinding wheel, the aluminum oxide, is what we use primarily to grind drill bits and pieces of steel and um, uh, things of that nature. It's not, it's not meant to handle uh, carbide tools that we would use in the machine shop. Those are, are specialty tools and we end up using a wheel on that one called a silica carbide wheel. And this silica carbide wheel, as you note, is a green in color. Any silica carbide wheels I've ever seen have always been green in color. So whenever I've seen the color green, in, uh, in this case, it means that I can only use it for a carbide tool, a carbide drill or a carbide um, uh, tool that I would use on my lathe. If you were to put a piece of high speed steel up against this, like a, a drill bit, very quickly it would wear this stone away. Even though the material that's in it is super hard, the agar or the bonding agent that's in it would cause it to fly apart. So anytime you see a green stone, only use that for carbide tools. We only have one of those in our shop here that's set up and uh, it's, it's specifically labeled for carbide tools only. So the other thing I wanted to mention to you that while I have grinding wheels out here is I wanted to talk briefly about the blotter that's on the face of the stone. The blotter contains a lot of good information about the stone. It tells us the diameter of the stone, it tells us the width of the stone, and it tells us the maximum RPM that this stone can be safely operated at. You have to match the stone with the grinder and make sure that the, the maximum RPM on the grinder is not greater than the maximum RPM of the stone. If it is, it could cause the stone to fly apart by what we call centrifugal force. Also on the blotter, you'd find some information on there about the make of the makeup of the stone, the aggregate size, the void space between the aggregates, the bonding agents that are used inside of the stone to hold it together, those are all important. The other thing about a blotter is a blotter is used on both sides of the stone in order to, when you put your, your two flanges up against the side of the stone, that the flanges have, a, 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 the blotter provides a soft spot for the flanges to go into. If there was a piece of dirt or a metal chip in the stone and you didn't have a blotter there, when the flange comes up and the torque is put on it when we bolt it down, it could cause and set up a stress fracture. So always make sure that there's a blotter there. 
The other thing I'd like to mention is, you see I'm pushing out some little bushings. You have to make sure that your stone is resting on the arbor. There's your arbor down here. It's got to rest on the arbor and be tight in there. And on this particular grinding stone, I've got bushings, a series of bushings. There are three of them. I can slide them out and I can select the bushing that is going to fit my arbor that I have available. So there's the smallest size it's got. Here's the midpoint size, and yes, it doesn't want to come out. There we go, we get it come out the other side. So I select the bushing that is going to fit my arbor, and in that case, that's too big, that one fits perfectly, and that guy's too small. So I'm going to discard this fella, and then I'm going to put the mid-size one back into the bushing, pop them together, I'm going to slide it back into my grinding stone like that and now I'm good to go. So I'm ready to mount that grinding stone on this, on this arbor and bolt it down.